Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, TechD is excited to show you the latest offering around IBM Planning Analytics. Uh, feel free to please use the Q&A tab in your Zoom window. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, we'll be happy to answer them as best we can. Um, but also feel free to, to raise your hand if you'd like to, to speak. Uh, we'd like to keep it as interactive as possible. Uh, so we appreciate your time. And joining us today is Mark Martina. He's a system architect uh, with TechD. And he's going to take you through kind of an update on the latest feature functions in the product. There's a lot of uh, new valuable um, functionality that's been introduced uh, since the days of TM1 and uh, former Cognos Enterprise Planning. So you're going to see uh, a new interface, uh, some new scorecarding and reporting capabilities built into the tool, um, a lot better self-service experience. And we'll take you through a live demo so you can see the tool in action. So with that said, I'd like to introduce Mark and take it away. Great. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Really appreciate your time. Um, so let's, let's get started. I know we're just time to eyeball. So just today, obviously, some intros. Um, then I'm going to just do a couple slides on an overview of what planning analytics is, formerly called TM1, if you're familiar with TM1. Then I want to get into the product itself, and then um, I'll leave a little bit of time again for Q&A. But as Brad had said, you know, at any time, if you have any questions, feel free to just type something in the chat. I'll see if I can interactively answer it or kind of even direct a demo in that direction, see if I can help everybody out. All right, that being said, um, a few members of the team, I figured I'd throw this slide out there. You might have met or hear from them. They're usually more out and about, so they tend to, to reach out to people a little bit. That's myself on the top left, uh, Brad at the bottom middle, who was just speaking earlier, and then there's you know, Phil, Jenny, DJ, Gabe, so some of our, our team members that are more customer-facing. And if you need to reach out to us at all, obviously our emails are here. Um, and we'll actually supply this deck at the end of the um, at the end of the webinar, so there's no need to you know copy anything down that you see on the on the slide deck. All right. That being said, let's um, let's kind of get into it. All right. So planning analytics. Planning analytics is IBM's enterprise uh, system for doing planning, budgeting, and forecasting. Um, again, it used to be called TM1 back in the day. They renamed it and rebranded planning analytics because they made so many changes, enhancements, and upgrades, it, it really needs a new name. So, yeah, a couple slides kind of go over you know, some of your standard pain points and what planning analytics does to solve this. Um, a lot of times it's a manually disconnected process, and I'm actually going to throw kind of a sample of it at you. Um, but most people just have, they live in an Excel world. Um, all their planning, budgeting, and forecasting is done in Excel. And this is not like small companies either. This is $100 million, billion dollar companies. A lot of times they just use Excel. The number one um, planning, budgeting, and forecasting tool in the world is Excel. It shouldn't be, but people are used to it. It's there, it's available, and so that's how it works. Um, but everything's very siloed. So there's a lot of problems with it. There's no agility. And there's definitely a lack of confidence. I had one client that did the entire plan budget in Excel, and they realized there was an equation that was wrong in it, and they described the entire budget for that year as just wrong, like they had none. Um, so you just have to watch out for that. Um, and this solves all those problems. Um, so most clients, again, they have Excel, and then somebody, the Excel guru, who takes the Excel at the end, kind of compiles everything together, you know, aggregates everything, and hopefully things go right. Um, we're getting rid of all those pain points. And by doing this, and by giving it the automation, um, everything's now faster, right? Quicker responses, and obviously more accurate, which is important. But accuracy and speed are both important. Um, so some companies do some type of rolling forecast, and they do it maybe twice a year or four times a year. And I'm like, well, why did you say two or three times a year? Why did you say you know, four times a year? Right? And the reason is it, it takes them so long to get it done that that's the most that they can do it. They would love to do it monthly, you know, every period. They can't do it because the process is that slow. It's too cumbersome. It's impossible. They struggle doing it four times a year. So if you want some kind of rolling forecast like that, it's a real problem because all those pain points 
are constantly, they're not going away. You know, um, doing it over and over again doesn't help. You still have all those different pain points, all those slowdowns. So something like this, like planning analytics, that actually allows you to, to really automate all this, gives you the ability to now do a rolling forecast that you can literally adjust every period. If you wanted to, you could literally adjust it every week. Um, uh, anything lower than that I think would be a little over the top. But um, you do have the flexibility to do it on that level, uh, which is great. <laughs> so not only is the process you have now going to be better, easier, simpler, but you have the ability to do a lot of things you can't currently do. So one thing is that there is an on-cloud and on-prem version. Um, what's nice about it is the experience is the exact same, right? Um, and if you're on cloud and you want to go to prem, you can do that and vice versa. Um, they're completely compatible. So sometimes there are systems that are cloud only. So if you go cloud, that's great. If you want to bring it back, you can't. Other systems are only on prem and not available in the cloud. What's nice about IBM is they always call have this hyper um, kind of systems where everything can be on cloud or on prem, and you just have to back up from one restore to the other, and you're good to go. So you do have the flexibility to do either or. Um, I would say a lot of our clients are on cloud, but probably still a little bit more on prem than cloud. Maybe 60 40 is probably a good ratio. 60% on prem, 40 on cloud, just because some people aren't really ready for cloud yet. But the product is you know, pretty much identical either way. Um, you just, there's less for your IT to do if it's in the cloud. IBM you know, takes care of it all for you. But overall, both options work for you. So it's, just, it's kind of a choice. So if you like the product, how it works, in the end, it's like, well, I want a cloud or I want an on-prem. And if you decide that that wasn't the right choice, you can always switch it later pretty easily. Okay. So out-of-the-box capabilities, fast performance, easy to use web-based experience. Most demos of plan analytics I've seen in the past are all kind of the web-based and the dashboarding. And I'm going to show you that, but I'm going to actually kind of start off with Excel because I don't want to take Excel away from people. You know, people in finance doing planning, budgeting, and forecasting, they're using Excel now. They love Excel. We're not taking it away. Excel is actually part of this solution and part of this experience. I'm going to show some very, very basic examples in Excel um, in the beginning, and then later on I'll get into all the pretty different graphs, charts, diagrams, and dashboards, and all that, that flash that everybody likes to see. But the core is, you know, Excel, I'm not taking it away. Right? Some people think that a system might take it away. We're not doing that. We're integrating the solution with Excel. So if you have some numbers and some sheet, you want to cut and paste them into the solution, no big deal. Right-click, copy, right-click, paste, you're done. All right? Self-service so analytics, designed to be drag-and-drop world. It's actually very easy to use. As I said, flexible deployments. You can put it on-prem or in the cloud. It scales, so I've got clients that have, you know, five users, 10 users. I've got clients that have 1,200 users of the system. So it definitely scales. You will not outgrow it. It's very secure and completely governed. So I can see my business unit, but not somebody else's. I can see somebody's salary. Someone else can see their information, but not their salary. Or I can see it at a high level, but not individual person level. So I know what the salary total is for that business unit, but not individual people. That's all part of the system from a security point of view. Okay. What's nice is it does work in every department. Finance is definitely one of the you know, strong uses of it because planning, budgeting, and forecasting is typically done on the finance side. But it's definitely not just a finance tool. Um, HR, they're very big for, for headcount. It's a strong use case for it. Um, everybody has to do budgeting. Like the IT department has to do budgeting. A lot of times they'll have to put in their numbers. And it makes it very easy for that as well. Um, sales, forecasting is a big deal. Also targets on what you're actually selling versus what you did sell. You, know, you can actually see how close you are and set it up so you're actually using it for sales only. So how close am I to my target? What's my bonus look like? What's it going to look like? What could it possibly be? So there's a lot of different applications for it. It's not specifically planning, budgeting, and forecasting with finance. It really fits into all parts of the actual corporation. Um, so just want to let you know that you know, it is really a solution for everybody. Do some customers have to say. So here's just a, a few shout-outs from some you know, CFOs from different companies. 
20% increase in productivity by reducing budget work for the finance team. So 20% of their day was freed up because the process was that easier, not much easier. Um, I'll be honest, for a couple of those employees, it was probably even better than that, especially whoever's job it is to do the consolidations. And again, they're mentioning rolling forecasts. Right? A lot of people can't do a rolling forecast. The process is too slow, too cumbersome, that you know, you've got one forecast, maybe two forecasts a year, and you're maxed out. Now you can just roll it every month, every period, every week if you wanted to, because it is that much quicker, it is that much easier. HR, a lot of manual analysis workload has been gone. So this client actually enabled a 20-year forecast, enhanced scenario planning by factoring in market changes. So they're actually looking at 20 years on their forecast. That's definitely aggressive. I don't know a lot of companies that go that far out, but it definitely gives you the ability to go out as far as you want. Five years is more of a kind of a standard, maybe 10, 20. Um, you can definitely do it. So one of our clients probably does something like that because they're into real estate. And so what they're doing is they actually know what their revenue is every month because of rentals. And so they're actually able to go out that far. So, yeah, I guess that is actually a pretty strong scenario. 50% faster reporting, maybe one day per week on weekly strategic planning. But one day per week is actually totally saved in man hours um, because of all probably the manual processes under the covers. And a 10% lift in forecasting strat accuracy. So again, your forecast is going to be better than it was before. And then sales forecast as well. So we're, we're not just making an easier process. We're not just making a faster process, but it's actually becoming a more accurate process as well. Two months saved on preparing data for budget reporting. And that's definitely not uncommon because, again, typically the process is that somebody has to manually do all the consolidations. So an Excel spreadsheet goes out to a dozen people, two dozen people, they do all their low-level numbers, they send it back in, somebody has to do a consolidation, that takes absolutely forever. The CFO takes a look at it and says, this is great, we need to change this by 3%, and they push everything out again, and everybody's got to make changes. So it happens all the time, takes absolutely forever, and now it's just all instant, real time. It's perfect. All right. Customer adoption. So 1,000 plus customers, you know, dollars spent, dollars saved. So here's some stats, supported languages. So some companies I know that use this are an international company, so people are using it, you know, all worldwide. Um, I've got one client that uses it just for input from different divisions, so they can actually get one consolidated number. So every division has their own process, and in the end, they use this for submissions. And again, there's two main options, two flavors, so local or on cloud. Um, and from a user perspective, it's going to be no difference. Uh, it's really personal preference. You have an IT staff that can support this on-prem. If not, then go cloud. If you, you know, cloud your strategy, then go cloud. If not, you know, stay on-prem. It's just a choice. All right, and that's all really from the slide deck. Kind of give you just a high-level overview of the whole purpose uh, of the, the product. And now let's kind of get into it a little bit. So what do we have here? All right. So what I have is Excel. So as I said before, a lot of people, most people start off with things like dashboards. You see I have some examples of dashboards here. I kind of like to start with Excel to kind of show people what most of the world looks like, and then from there kind of take it to the next level. Right? So the old school input, so we've got a company called Old School, right? And what we're doing is we've got two different products, 16 gig and 32 gig 4G phone. Our geography is Florida. And what everybody typically does, they have all their equations inside the Excel spreadsheet itself, right? So I've got retail, internet, and distribution. And so I'm expecting to say to sell 24 in January. If I switch it to 25, the number is 25. Everything changes because of all my different equations, right? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, what most people do. So I look at it here. There's sums here. There's sums here. If I look down here, it's the same thing. If I want a consolidation of everything, then what I've got to do is I've got to do, you know, something like, you know, 
create one called total, and then have this guy equal to him plus him, right, and do something funky like this and kind of spread it around. And, you know, now I've got a total of everything in the channel, right? So you can put those in there, and at some point it's okay, but I've got two products in one location. Well, in reality, do I have just Florida or do I have 50 states? If I have 50 states, am I going to do this 50 times? Do I have two products or do I really have 100 products? Right? So when you start off small, it's pretty easy to kind of do it this way. But as you see, as you go more and more and more, it becomes more and more difficult. It's really a challenge. Right? So it's the old school way of doing it, which is unfortunately statistically the most popular way for companies. Right? So the new school way is using planning analytics. Okay? So we look here, the numbers are still the same. I've got retail, internet, distribution, and I've got my details here. So what I'm looking at is the 16 in Florida. Right? So I look over here, I've got the 16 and I've got the Florida. In this case, it used to say 24, but I changed it to 25, and that number is now in Excel. Right? So nobody in the entire company sees it except me. If I want somebody else to see it, I've got to share this, email to them, put it on some share drive or whatever. Right. Now, the way this product works, the way Plenty of Analytics works, is there is no data in Excel. All Excel is, it's a view to your data, a view to your system. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I take a look over here, I look at 24. You see there's this funky equation here? You don't have to type that in. The system does it automatically. But what that means is there's actually no data in the system at all. Right. So if I make this a 25 and I hit enter, it says recalc, and all of a sudden 25, this goes up from 502 to 503. So when I hit enter, what happened under the scenes is that 24 was overwritten by a 25. It was sent from Excel, the planning analytic behind the scenes, and adjusted automatically rolled up. Right. So I'm looking at my 16 gig. Well, what if I want to look at my 32 gig? Not a problem. I come over here, and if I want to, I can take a look, and I see that I have a lot of products, as I had you know, thought I might. But I've got a 16 and 32 gig, but that's 4G phones. I've got just basic phones. I've got 3G phones as well. Right. In addition to that, I've got PCs and tablets I sell. Right? So if I want to start doing all these different variations in Excel, I want to have you know, 50 tabs to buy. Nobody wants that, but that's what a lot of people have. So I want to switch this to 4G and 32 gig. I switch it. I hit apply. Now my numbers are pointing to 32. So there's no data in the system. Excel is still here. It still works, but it's just an interface to your data. And I can cut and paste data right into this without any problems at all. all right. And even though I have kind of the same look, the same feel, it's kind of a pivot table on steroids is the best way to describe the data. All right. So what do I mean by that? Well, I look at my other tab here. I'm looking at it in a different way. So I've got all my different dimensions, all my different ways of slicing and dicing the data at the top here. And so here I'm looking at my 16 gig. I'm looking at all my months with my year. I'm looking at my different, you know, retail, internet, and distribution, my three different channels, right? Well, if I wanted to change the look of this, the feel of this, if I want to do this the old school way, I would have to cut and paste and this and that. Not anymore, right? So here's my X and Y axis, essentially my rows and my columns. And here's what I'm filtering off of. If I want to see multiple products next to each other, I can just drag it over. And now I've got, oop, I tried the wrong thing over. That's the revenue. Those are my different measures. I put that back. Grab the wrong one. So I can grab my products, drag it right over. And now I'm looking at 16 gig, but if I wanted to, I come over here. I can do something like 
like this, where I've got my 16 and 32 gig and the summation next to each other. And now, for January, here's my total smartphones for 4G, and here's the two variances. So that's kind of like a pivot table, but it's very simple, very easy to use. If I want it to be, you know, a high-level number and I don't want to see, I want to see January below it, no big deal. I can do that as well. And I've got each category with all the months below it. So it's very simple, very easy to just move things around. If I want to see more locations in just Florida, again, not a problem. I can drag that over. Maybe I want to put that here. And now I've got all my different regions automatically rolled up. And so it gives me the flexibility to move the data any way I want. Right. So this is Excel. If I want to cut and paste data right in here, I can do that as well. Not a problem. But the thing is that there is no data in this system. If somebody takes my laptop, throws it out the window, there's something lost. If this Excel file, you know, if I lose it, if it crashes, if anything happens to it, there's no big deal. There's no data in here. And what's nice is if somebody changes a number and I'm looking at that number and I do a refresh, I'll see that change instantly. So the consolidations are instant, and any change anybody else makes, since we're all pointing to the same planning analytic system, is seen by everybody simultaneously. It's also seen in the web interface simultaneously. So let's go to the web. If I come over here, and I'm already opening something up, let's go to this. So here's the web interface. So some people will ask, well, can I use the web, or do I have to use Excel? Is there a cost difference, blah, blah, blah. There's no difference. If you're a user, you have access to both interfaces. So I can actually use the web interface or the Excel interface or both. They're not mutually exclusive. So I can start things off with Excel, do a lot of cutting and pasting, and get all my numbers in there, and now I can quickly go to the web and maybe graph it out, chart it out, do a pretty dashboard to really articulate and show my numbers to, you know, to CFO or anyone, right? Or I can input my numbers in the web if I wanted to. I don't need to use Excel at all. I don't need to use the web at all. I can use either or, right? So you have that kind of flexibility. I personally like Excel for inputting the data the value just because I like Excel. And then I like to come in here and do, you know, the different pretty kind of dashboards and things. So what we're looking at now is we're looking at what's called books. Each book, and this one's a folder, so this has different books in it. Each book is essentially the, the plenty analytics term for a dashboard, right? So if I look at the revenue book, right, this is what comes up, right? And if I look at it, it's actually the same data, right? So I've got phones, PCs, and tablets, right, for my quarters, for my year. So I'm actually budgeting on a monthly level, a period level, but I'm rolling up the quarters and years because it's more of a high-level you know, diagram or, or dashboard. Right? But if I go to the unit forecast, this is more of a detail level. Right? If we take a look at it, it looks exactly like you know, what I have in, in Excel. Right? So we go back to my Excel. So I've got my 16 and 32 gig phones for Internet for Florida. So we go back over here. So Internet, Florida, in this case I'm looking at 32 gig. But if I come over here and I want to switch it, I can easily switch to 64 gig or um, 16 gig. Now I'm looking at Florida, units sold, 16 gig. If I take a look at Internet, January's 25. If I look back over here, I look at Internet, January, it's 25. It's the exact same value. All right? Now what's nice is, again, I can use any interface. So if I come over here, all right, and I make that 25 or 30, it's in the system, I go back to my dashboard, I refresh my dashboard. Now my 25 just turned into a 30. If I don't like it as a 30, 
I come in here, make it a 35, and now I've just changed it to 35. Go back to Excel. Refresh my sheet, and now I'm looking at 35 again. Okay. So you make a change in one place, it's saved everywhere. And there's nothing for a user to do. You're literally just typing in Excel like you normally do, or you just type in the web. Right. But the web is going to give you all these different charts and graphs that you normally wouldn't have in a very easy to use, simple interface. Right. So totally your forecast, I literally have a chart for each one of my different categories down below. And if I want to change things, I can change things here just as easily as I did there. Right. So, and I'm looking at the internet channel. If I want to go to retail, I'll just select retail and everything will change to retail. Happened so quick, I didn't even notice it. Distribution, same thing. So I have all these different pull downs, all these different options, all the charts, graphs, everything will just change instantly. Let's kind of go through a few more tabs, show you a few more examples. All right. So again, there's charts, graphs, everything's very simple, easy to use. So it's just different ways of looking at your data. And that's all really a dashboard is different views of your data. So I've got, you know, heat map here. In this case, I have this blue color where it's a little bit more harsh. Got, you know, different charts here that show you my margin versus my revenue. And what's nice is there's just no equations that a user has to see or look at. Right? If I want to, you know, sum something up, I would just set that up in the system and there's no equations in actually Excel or in the dashboard. Everything's predefined under the covers of planning analytics. So a lot of people, maybe you're on TM1 or you're in the older system, and what you're doing is you're using maybe Excel or possibly something called TM1 Web, which is kind of the old school TM1 that you used back in the day. Um, it works. It's okay. But the workspace dashboards are just leaps and bounds above whatever TM1 Web was. Right? The look, the feel, the flexibility, it's very easy, very simple to use, just dragging and dropping things over. All right, so these are predefined ones I've created. Yeah, I've got incomes, I've got assumptions. I want an income statement. Here's my version of an income statement. Right. Also, too, IBM has a product called Cognos Analytics. So planning analytics and Cognos Analytics actually integrate perfectly together. So planning analytics is a data source for Cognos Analytics. So if you're a Cognos user and you're used to creating dashboards and reports in Cognos, you create those exact same reports against the data that's in planning analytics. And what's nice is it's also real time. Right? So it's an in memory database, planning analytics. So every time I enter a value, it's automatically calculated and summed up and consolidated. So if I make a low level change, I'll see a high level number change instantly. I'll see it in this web interface, in Excel, or in Cognos Analytics if I have the two products integrated. And they integrate seamlessly. So if I log into one, I'm logging into both. So it actually shares the login screen and the security shared. So whatever I can see in planning analytics, I'll be able to see in Cognos Analytics, no more, no less. So security doesn't disappear. You don't have to set up security twice. The one security level will pass to the other, which works out great. So a lot of times people will secure things based on you know, maybe products or regions or customers or business units, depending on what they're actually, you know, planning to. Um, and also sometimes the, the data that's in there. So I might be able to see the headcount. I might be see the name of the employee, the employee ID, but not their salary. Or maybe I'll see the salary for the whole business unit, but not the salary for individual people because I'm just not allowed. So what if I wanted to create one of these? Is it easy? Is it hard? It's actually pretty easy. Right? So I edit this guy. There's a little edit button here. Right? There's something called a little plus here. And what I'm in is I'm something called SmartCo. It's the name of the actual system. And in your case, it'll probably be the name of your company or whatever system you want to have. Right? And I'm using something called a revenue cube. So these are all different cubes that were created. You can do revenue. You can do headcount. You can do whatever you want. In this case, it's revenue. And I've got these different views. And imagine, like, 
these cubes as being like a Rubik's Cube. Right? You can twist it, turn it any way you want. Well, if you like a certain way that you've twisted and turned it, you can save it as a view. And that's what this is here. These are different views. Right? So the view I'm using in Excel is the input two. So I want to bring that over here. I can easily do that. Maybe I'll create a fresh tab. add you to the system. So I'm looking at the exact same data here that I was looking at in Excel. And I can use it here just like I do in Excel. I can type in different values. Remember, I change this to 35. If I think 40 is better, I can change it to 40, and everything's automatically changed. Okay. Well, I have this intuitive little bar at the top. If I click on that, it gives me a menu. Some things that are very common here are duplicate. So why would I want to duplicate? Well, because sometimes I want to see the exact same data, but just in a different format. So if I duplicate, I click on this little menu again, and now maybe I want to change it to a chart. Visualization. Right. So let's do a chart. And let's see what's a good one. We'll try this guy and see how he looks. Not too bad. Um, January and February. Let's see what else we've got. Column chart. So, you can change it any way you want. Now, if I'm doing this, I probably don't need to see this at the top. So, what I'll do is I will hide it. So, my chart gets bigger, and everything sizes very easily. Right? So, maybe I don't want it this big. Maybe I want it to take up my half my space. Well, no big deal. I just shrink it down a little bit. And then maybe I want to see it again, but in a different way. Well, I just copy it again. Now, now it's down here, but I can move it anywhere I want. Maybe I want to make this guy, you know, maybe a pie chart. How's that pie chart look? It's kind of flick. All right. So I'll shrink it down a little bit. Probably get rid of the header, because I don't need that header. Moving right up here. Again, everything drags and drops very easy. So there's not really a lot of skill involved. It's pretty simple. Once you get used to it, it's very easy to do. Um, and now what I can do if I wanted to is I can actually sync everything. So how do I do that? Well, there's something called properties. And there's something called synchronization. And all I do is say sync my dimensions. So I do that for this guy. Do that for him, and do it for this one. And now they're all synced up. So right now I'm looking at distribution. If I double click, and you see the interface here that pops up. It's the exact same interface that's in in Excel. So if you're used to one interface, you're actually used to both. So now I select all three again, and everything syncs. So whatever I change, whatever I you know, decide I want to look at here, I can see everywhere. So instead of Florida, let's check out Maryland. And I see my Maryland numbers, and everything adjusts automatically. Very easy, very simple. I can add different logos or anything I want. Um, maybe I don't want to use you know, what's embedded in here. I can actually take my selection, kind of drag them right off. And I can hide it here as well, like I did with everything else. Shrink them down a little bit. I'm going to get fancy with different things like coloring and stuff like that. So let's say I want to add some kind of little symbol. Can I add this guy here? By default, it puts it on top. But if I click on it, this little intuitive menu pops up. Maybe just play around, you can figure it out. But for the order, it's a five. Well, it's on top. So five is top. One make it the bottom. So now I've got this color below it. Maybe I want to just kind of make this some kind of little border in the middle. My green's an aggressive color. So if I go to my properties, 
general style. I mean, instead of green, we'll do maybe some kind of blue. A little bit better. Let me turn on this one. Yeah, I like that one. Okay. Maybe just kind of move him over a little bit more. See how it shows you if it's lined up or not. And then if I want, I can just save it. Right. Now, the key is that the data here, again, is the exact same data I have below. Right. So if I expand it out, there's my January, February, and March. And these numbers here should match up with whatever numbers I have in my other system. And I'm looking at Maryland. I go back to Florida. I've got 48. So if I make it from 40, I make this a 50. Now 50. I go back to Excel. And I just do a little refresh here. My 35 that was here is now 50. And you notice that the total changes as well because everything automatically consolidates. So it's very simple, very easy to use. From user's perspective, there's, there's actually not a lot of training. You know, you give somebody a day worth of training, all of a sudden they connect with Excel, they connect with the dashboard. It's very easy to use a dashboard if you want to create a dashboard. Actually, the skill set, as you can see, it's not really that hard either. It's more mouse skill than anything else. Just dragging and dropping things over. All right. And I can save it. No problems. Then my little save button over here. And I just saved my dashboard. I don't want to rename this sheet. It probably makes sense. Um, just call it new tab for now. That's my new tab that I just created. And I can share this with anybody and everybody I want. If the user has access to the system, that's great. I can show it to them. No problem, I can send them a link. If they don't, well, there's a little share option here. Uh, again, I can send them a link to it. I can cut and paste this and it'll take them right here. Or if not, I can download it as a PDF, a PowerPoint, or an image. Right. So let's say I want to make this a PDF. It's pretty easy to do. First thing it does is it actually gives you a preview of all your different tabs. There's a lot of tabs in here. Maybe I don't want the person to see everything. Maybe they can't see everything. So I'll pick maybe this one, get rid of these other guys. Definitely want my new one. Right. Hit download. Now behind the scenes, it's preparing a PDF file with all my different visualizations in it. Over here, it was just created, revenue PDF. Open it up. And each visualization is on a on a different page. So if somebody doesn't have access to the system, but they want to see the data, I can send it to them as a PDF or you know, a slide deck or anything. But if they have access, I can just send them a link as well. There's also something called natural language processing, which is pretty cool. So I can actually ask for something, right? And I'll actually search out and give me options of what I might want to look for. All right, let me create a new tab here. Right. And it's based off what you actually see. So if I want to look at, you know, revenue. Per year. spell everything right. What it does is it actually goes through the system and it takes a look and says, well, where do we have revenue? Where do we have years? Um, and based upon that, it comes back with some options. It tells you where it came from, right? So it's in SmartGo. It's looking at revenue cube. There's something called revenue metrics and also revenue reporting. And pretty much the same type data. Um, 
But if I look at this and I think this is great, I like it, I hit use, and now it actually shows me my gross revenue for 2019. Right. I can then come in here and make any tweaks or adjustments I want, or I can just type in something else. My revenue, let's say, per product. So now it has my revenue based on each product. If I like that, I can just use that as well. Right. And again, once it's there, I can tweak it any way I want. I can expand it. I can see there's my 4G phones, and there's actually my revenue. So we weren't actually doing budgeting and forecasting per revenue. It was per units. Those units versus the cost versus how much I sell it for the average sales price it was able to give me my revenue. And all those equations are in the system, so a user doesn't have to deal with it, and none of that intelligence is in Excel. It's all in the system. It's not in this dashboard. It's not in Excel. It's in the planning analytics system under the covers. If I want to switch it to something else, I can do that as well. So again, I was doing units before. I can do both if I wanted to. So now I've got my total units for all my products, for all my geography. Right, before I was looking at Florida, now I'm just looking at this one location. I'm looking at all the locations combined, so it's one value. So again, it's very easy to use. Natural language processing, a lot of AI intelligence is being added to the system all the time. IBM is very big into that, so all their products going forward are going to have more of this natural language processing, more machine learning, more of this intelligence built in. Cognos does as well. The newest version of Cognos was released two days ago, 11.1.4. Um, it's the latest version of planning analytics, and you can tell all the iterations. The dashboard's becoming slicker and they're adding more and more AI to each iteration. So I think that's kind of the basics of what I was going over um, to show you how it would normally work in Excel, how you could use Excel going forward with planning analytics, how you'd use it in conjunction with the dashboards, and how you could do real-time reporting, real-time dashboarding. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yep, so from a browser support point of view, uh, it supports what I call the big four. So Firefox, Safari, um, Chrome, and Internet Explorer. Um, somebody had a question actually of how this sets apart this product from um, other products in the field. That's actually a pretty good question. Um, I'm not a pro with every product in the field, um, but one of the advantages it has is the integration with all the other systems, without a doubt. And I'd say the AI and natural language processing are also pretty differentiators. And the Excel input are, I think, some of the, the, the big strengths. So there's, there's a ton of dashboarding tools out there. Um, you know, everybody's heard of Power BI, everybody's heard of Tableau, so there's actually a lot of you know, products that actually show dashboards. But, you know, dashboards with read-write interface, with the Excel input, and then with the AI and natural language processing, and then with the hooks in the Cognos, kind of integrates the entire thing as one package. And you can even go to the next step, and it is also integrates with SPSS, which is IBM's uh, predictive analytics tool. So if you wanted to do predictive forecasting and you wanted, you know, an AI tool to do that, either in R or Python or in FPSS, you can actually do that as well. So there's really no end to capabilities um, with all the different bolt-ons. It gives you a solution that's way above and beyond, I would say, a lot of the competitors. Because a lot of the competitors, they're doing planning, budgeting, forecasting. Like, that's it. Right? They're not a reporting company. They're not, you know, predictive analytics or AI company. They're just doing this. So they're kind of siloed. And IBM is not. IBM has all the siloed products, and they're all being integrated now. So if I want to schedule reports to be mailed out to everybody that are pretty printable in PDF or Excel, 
I could do that very simply in Cognos, and I can have data from planning analytics and from my data warehouse and from you know, Salesforce I'm connecting to, or all or any of these you know, products together, and I can send that report to everybody weekly. And that's way above and beyond the scale of what you would get out of a planning, budgeting, and forecasting tool. So the integration between this and Cognos is massive. Um, then if you want to do more predictive, there's the integration with you know, SPSS as well. But definitely a very common and very powerful combination is Cognos Analytics and Planning Analytics. And together, yeah, it's really hard to beat. Because um, now you've got a reporting system that users can actually make changes with using Excel. So I can have my actuals in the system and my targets being something that users actually can type in. And then I can do my enterprise reporting on top of it. I think the combination of those two and then the AI interface as well is is definitely a differentiator, a massive differentiator. That's that's a great question. Um, and what's nice too is again it's available on cloud or on prem. So one of the differentiators is a lot of other products are you know, cloud only. There's some of the newer guys that just popped up. They were kind of born on the cloud, or they're only on the cloud. And there's nothing wrong with the cloud, but some people just don't want to have you know, all their data, all their revenue, everything, every number that means anything on somebody else's computer in some other data center being you know, maintained by who knows who. You know, I mean, it could be you know, support-wise, usually a lot of these cloud companies you know, depending on when you call, you'll get somebody in the U.S., then England, then China, then Australia, and then it kind of circles back around. A lot of people don't like that either. So the on and off prem is definitely a big difference. Um, also, to I guess the dashboarding. So I've mentioned some other kind of common dashboarding tools that are out there. Um, the integration of the data with the dashboards in planning analytics is also a big differentiator too. I'm so very, I'm so closely knit with the data since it's actually in this system. That gives me a lot more flexibility to do things than I ever would before. I mean, I can change the data in here. I can rename things in here. I can do administrative tasks on the data in this dashboarding interface I'm allowed to. I don't really go into the admin components of it, but everything is integrated in this web interface. So I can come in here and you know, I can change the dimensions. I have all these processes that are set up to load the data. So as a user, I come in here and I can do run and load in a brand new period worth of data. I can do it in the web, I can do it in Excel, or I can have it scheduled or an admin can do it. It just gives me all that flexibility, being that everything's so well integrated. So if you're evaluating multiple tools, those are definitely things that have it stand out in the crowd. And they're, they're pretty powerful things. That was a good question. All right. Um, any other questions from anybody? No? Okay. Well, we're getting pretty close to the end of the hour anyway. Um, um, okay, so somebody has a security question. Um, so somebody wants to know about user roles in, in planning analytics. From a role perspective, there's really two roles. You're either an administrator or you're just a user. But once you're a user, we can change and fine tune what you have access to. Okay. So example, I was looking at the revenue cube. So I take a look at my revenue cube here. Okay. So I'm an administrator, I have access to everything. I'm the admin, I create cubes, I create dimensions, anything I want. But if I look at my revenue cube, my revenue cube is made up of these different dimensions. So it's organization, what's my channel, what's my product. So the dimension is just a different way of slicing and dicing. If we look through it, this is exactly what we were looking at before. So under product, I've got my different roll-ups, my product total, there's my phones, and if I keep drilling down, there's my 4G I've been looking at. The way it works is if you're a user, I can set security up at different levels. So the first level could be, I have access to this cube or I don't. And that's the most simplest level, right? I can get to this revenue cube and see everything or I cannot. Right? But then within that, 
I can actually divide up my security more and more. Right? So one common example would be okay, you know, product, but probably more common than product would be more like geography. Right? So if I look at organization, I've got my total company and I've got my different regions, I might be in charge of Florida and Florida only. So when I open up this queue, if I'm not an administrator, I'm a user, and it's locked down, I'm only going to see Florida. And I, maybe I'll see Eastern East region, and I'll see the roll-up value. Maybe I won't, but I won't see any other regions. I won't see Massachusetts. I won't see Maryland, because that's not my responsibility. Or maybe I will see it, but it'll be read-only. So you have the flexibility to really, from a granular level, adjust security. And there's, again, there's two ways you can do it. I can make it so you have no access at all. You don't even know it exists. So if I come in here, I don't see Massachusetts. I don't see Maryland. I just see Florida. Or I can make it so maybe I see all three because there's no harm in me seeing numbers in the other states, but I can only adjust the numbers in Florida. Right? So it's very simple from a user perspective. You're an admin or you're a user. But then when it comes to users, you get very granular with the security if you want to or if you need to. So smaller shops, keep it simple. You have access to the full revenue cube. Larger shops tend to actually increase security and make it more granular where well, you have access to just your state, just this region, just these products, but you're still considered a user. So it's the same entitlement role but it's, you know, but you're limited based upon the security that was set up. But now, that was a great question. Any other questions? Okay, great. Um, again, I'd like to thank everybody for your time. Um, we will be sending out a copy of the slide deck with all of our information. If you have any questions that come up after, or you want to do some comparisons, I guess we were talking about before. Um, Mark, oh, there wait. is one other question before you, you sign off. Oh, yeah, there we go. We're bringing multiple data sources together that might have one to many relationships. How is that set up? GUI, SQL, et cetera. Um, good question. Um, so a lot of times we'll connect directly to something like an ERP system, but you can technically connect to any and multiple systems. Uh, if it's a many-to-one relationship, that's not a big deal. Uh, there's two interfaces that you could technically utilize. There's a client-based tool, which is kind of the original interface called Architect, and then there's the actual web interface that we're looking at now. Um, usually whoever is doing it, um, the pulling of the data, usually knows the database is a little bit better, um, but typically it's SQL statements under the covers, and those SQL statements will bring in the data, and you'll have to determine you know, based on what your data looks like, how it should be displayed appropriately. So it's a many to one relationship, such as I've got five products for this one region. Well, a lot of times you'll split that data off anyway into different dimensions, right? So I'll have a products table that has all my products in it, and I'll have a region table with all my regions, and there probably will be a many to one relationship, but it'll divide up appropriately, and then you just summarize the data up to probably a higher level. You usually don't want it on a transaction level. You'll probably want it on a little bit of a higher level to plan budget and forecast. But you, you could through put it in a transaction level if you wanted to. Um, but if you connect to multiple data sources, it's not a problem at all. Um, and again, once it's up and running, um, any user can has permission can load the data back into the system without any problems. But that is done using you know, this interface here. So in this case, this one's called Add Product. process. I'm not really sure. I don't usually look at these too often in here. So this one has three different parameters. So when somebody runs this, they type in the different parameters. Um, this is not exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for one that maybe pulls from a database. Uh, import from SPSS. Load actuals. It's a pretty common one. Let's take a look at this guy. Parameters, no parameters, uh, some scripting that the system generated. Uh, 
cryptocurrency organization in years being pulled in. But I don't know. I think it's coming from a flat file. I don't think this is actually coming from a database, so it's not like a, a real-life scenario. Most of the time it comes right from the database. But this is a GUI interface that you would use to kind of set up all your different connections. You can validate. You can run it. It'll bring in the data for you automatically. I don't want to run anything because I don't want to screw up all the data in the system already. But there's essentially the old school client tool, or you can use the new school web tool to actually do all your different development work. It connects to multiple data sources, not a problem. Um, and once it's set up, you rarely have to change it because those parameters I was showing you, those parameters will usually be year and period. This way, you know, every time you, you do a period close, so let's say, you know, September close today, the 17th, it's a little bit late, but let's say close today, I could go in here, pull in all my values for September, and now all my actuals for that period will be loaded into the system. I'm not sure if that answered your question or not. Um, if it didn't, feel free to reach out to me directly, and we can talk through your exact problem, and I'll give you exact details of, of how it would be done. Any other questions? Looks like we took up our full two hours today. Okay. Well, everybody, again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. We'll be sending out a slide deck to everyone. If you do have any other questions that come up, please feel free to reach out to us directly, and we'll answer them as soon as possible. Thank you, and have a great day.